45.4%. There's the answer. You ever seen Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Uh, there's this thing, 42, and it's the answer to the question of the universe, but nobody knows what the question is the whole time. So the answer to this video is 45.4%. Now what we'll do is spend the rest of the video figuring out why that number is important and how I derived that number. Now, before we dig into that, what exactly am I doing here? Typically, I do head-to-head -head product comparisons. And I think for people who are just looking for simple buying advice, I think that's a fantastic a way to approach gear reviews. However, the more gear reviews I do, the more I realize I'm losing some nuance when I do that. Because sometimes it's very difficult to say that one product is necessarily better than the other. And depending on the circumstances used or the individual using it or your taste or your hunting style, it's really difficult to say like this product is quote unquote better than this other product. So what I wanted to do was start a series where I actually looked at the underlying technologies or the underlying materials, kind of like a first principles approach to gear reviews. And I've been wanting to do a stove review, a backcountry stove review for quite some time. However, it's like, how do you choose what goes head to head? Because there's so many different options. And then I recently went through some experiments last year when I switched from being primarily a, a jet boil guy, also having some MSR stoves, but these kind of like all in one kit stoves and then I started experimenting, you know, this is the MSR Pocket Rocket version two, and I had this paired with a, a Tox uh, titanium cup, basically trying to find the ultimate ultralight setup. But the more time I spent with that, I realized that counter to my intuition, things that I thought would be lighter ended up being heavier because they were taking more fuel. And that really got me thinking. And I realized a question that I've never heard answered was how important are heating fins on the pot that you use to boil? So here's an example of a pot with heating fins. This is a jet boil mini mo. And here's an example of a pot with no heating fins. This is a Snow Peaks TI, a really high quality Japanese titanium pot. Now one would think similar surface areas, similar materials, things should boil, you know, at a similar speed. But the first error in the logic there is that it's not similar surface area. And we're gonna, we're gonna dig into this a little bit further. Now before we start getting into the results, I wanna talk about the testing methodology because it's not perfect. However, you can fix a lot of errors in experiment design with sample size. Like if you just test enough stuff, it'll kind of make up for things not being perfect. So I don't want you to think that I'm saying this is the be all and end all and this was a perfect way to test, you know, fins versus no fins because it's an incredibly complicated question. The shape of the fin, the surface area of the fin, where the fins are on the bottom of the pot, the distance of the flame to the bottom of the, of the stove in relation to the fins, all of these elements can impact how effective heating fins are on the bottom of a pot. However, I just wanted to answer the question as simple as possible. As a function of percentage, how much faster on average do heating fins make pots boil compared to pots with no heating fins. So I've got four setups in total. I already introduced three of them, the Jet Boil Mini Mo, the Snow Peak TI, the Tox TI, and this is an Ollie Camp XTS. Now, for the purposes of this test, I used this particular stove. This is also an Ollie Camp XTS stove. Um, the results should be applicable across a variety of burners. It shouldn't matter. And in fact, I even tested it with other burners and the differential stayed consistent. Now, if you do notice other burners getting quicker heating times, it's most likely that they're just applying more fuel. Because let's take a minute and really think about this. Why are boiling times even important? Because 
your boiling time is a proxy for how much fuel you're gonna use. And let's say you save three ounces by cutting down to a Tokes cup with an Ollie Camp burner, but then you end up burning 42% more fuel, by the end of your 10 day trip, you're gonna have six ounces more fuel completely uh, negating your three ounce stove benefit. So it's not like I really care how fast a pot boils. What I do care is how much fuel it takes to boil that pot. And the best way to measure that when going head to head it with, with similar setups and similar surroundings is to record boiling time. So took four pots with the same stove. Now the first part of the test, I used no water. I wanted to measure at the 10 second and the 20 second mark, how hot the material in each of these pots got. And I did all the temperature readings with this infrared thermometer. I've used this on several of my reviews, super reliable. Now the second part of the test, I measured independently, cause you can't really trust any of the marks on these stoves, 500 milliliters of water. Then one at a time, I tested the temperature at the beginning, filled it with 500 mil, and timed it all the way to a rolling boil. Now the other thing that I did was I took temperature readings of the water with the infrared thermometer at 30 second intervals between starting it and how long it took to get to a rolling boil. So we have two very interesting data sets that we can look at here. We can look at the speed with which the water elevated in temperature in a variety of different pots with different materials, different heating fins, et cetera. And then we also just have the kind of binary data set of how long did it, did it take to reach a rolling boil. And if we look at those two things independently, we can actually draw some really interesting conclusions. Now, before we dive into the results, I gotta give a little shout out to the sponsor. As always, there's two sponsors to this video. The first one, Forged in the Backcountry. Lifestyle apparel brand I started for backcountry hunters. I wanted stylish, well-fitting, high quality clothes that weren't tribally associated with one brand or merch or influencer or anything like that. So if you like what I do, you think it's cool, or you're a backcountry hunter and you're just looking for cool gear to wear around the city, forgedinthebackcountry.com. And then of course, Mindful Reviews, the online community platform I built from the ground up for people who are interested in unbiased, non-sponsored gear reviews and want a place to meet like-minded people. If you like what I do and you want to see more of it, go join the community, mindful-reviews.com. One more quick note, and you're going to hear more of these as the season progresses. I still have a line on one or two BC bear hunts um, this year. There's some vacancies at Primitive Outfitting. I'm heading up there in about five weeks. And then I'm going to be guiding for Jeff Lander this year in Alberta and there's still two spots available for guided archery mule deer hunts the second and third week of October. Now, I don't want to mislead anybody. These are extremely challenging hunts. It's in the prairies in Southern Alberta with really you know deep coolies, kind of like river's edge stuff. It's very intense archery hunting. Um, there are definitely some very large deer in that area. Last year, there's a 193 buck taken. So there's some risk, but there's definitely some reward. But if you're interested in a guided archery mule deer hunt in Alberta, let me know. So I opened the video with the number 45.4%. So what exactly does that mean? And I'm going to pull up some fancy graphs here, and I'm going to start going through the data. Now, I'm not going to go through all the data sets. I'm only going to pair the rolling boil times because that's where we can extract the most meaning. So for the Ollie Camp, it was 156 seconds. The Mini Mo was 167 seconds. The Snow Peak, 220 seconds. And the Tokes was 250 seconds. And this is where we start to see some very strong correlations emerge. So if we compare the Ollie Camp against the Snow Peak, now obviously this is not a perfect combination. The Snow Peaks is a slightly larger diameter, but 
for purposes of what we're doing, backcountry hunters, I mean, those are pretty close size of pot. And there was a 41% discrepancy in boil time. So to say that again, the Ollie Camp XTS under similar circumstances, no wind, it all happened here in my, in my workshop, with fins boiled 41% faster than the snow peaks. So the Ollie Camp boiled in 156 seconds and the snow peak boiled in 220 seconds. Now, before we dig into that, let's look at the next pairing. So the next pairing was the Minimo pot against the Tokes. This is more of a cup than a pot, but you know what I'm saying. Now in this particular instance, the jet boil with the fins, and again, it's not a perfect comparison. I actually thought the Tokes being smaller was gonna give it advantage, but I'm gonna say I was sadly mistaken about that. The Minimo, again, boiled in 167 seconds, and the Tokes boiled in 250 seconds with a discrepancy in these two of 49.7%. Say that another way, the Minimo pot with heating fins boiled 49.7% faster than the Tokes cup. Now, if we average those two, the 41, the 49.7, we get 45.4. Now, you could do this with different pots, different fins, different shapes, different burners. I don't think you're gonna get 45.4 every time. Uh, let's just say we have a 10% margin of error. I think I feel very comfortable saying there is somewhere between a 35 and a 55% increase in efficiency of boiling times when you have heating fins on the bottom of your pot. Now, the more important way to understand that is that you need to carry 35 to 55% less fuel with you into the backcountry if you have a pot with heating fins. Now, there are a ton of other variables. A lot of people like the jet boil system because it's more of a closed system. It's less subject to wind. The longer I've hunted in the backcountry, the less that really matters to me. I think if you take some time, pile up a couple things, find a decent spot, it's not nearly as impactful as most people make it out to be. So. Yes, if you're on a windier hunt or a colder hunt or a hunt at higher elevation, all of these things are going to cause you to go through more fuel. But within the individual circumstances on the hunt, just having a pot with heating fins should reduce your fuel needs by about 45%, which really, I want to go over some of the finer details for the tokes because this is the one that really surprised me. I mean, I wish I could let you feel how thin like it bends in your hand. I thought this thing was gonna boil in like 30 seconds, but let's go over the heating times. So at 30 seconds, it was 114 degrees. 60 seconds, 126 degrees. 90 seconds, 140 degrees. 120 seconds, 152 degrees. 150 seconds, 166 degrees. And then three minutes, 185 degrees three and a half minutes, 200 degrees, and then it took another minute and 10 seconds, all the way to four minutes and 10 seconds for this to boil. So the other thing that I discovered here is that the pots with the larger diameter boiled faster, which makes sense now that I think about it because it's more surface area for the flame to heat up. That's why, that's the basic fundamental principle that the heating fins are taking advantage of by increasing the surface area with the heating fins. It's the same reason a radiator helps cool down your engine. The heating fins, you put hot water through those, hot liquid coolant through those heating fins, the greater surface area allows it to cool down more. It's like an elephant's ears cooling down the blood, etc. So in my mind, I thought smaller pot, you know, more concentrated flame should boil faster. Sorely mistaken on that front. Bigger pots boil faster. But I also found something with the Tokes. When I heated them up empty, the Tokes got the hottest fastest. And I think there's a point of diminishing returns with thin metal. I think when metal gets too thick, it takes too long to heat up and you're wasting heat from the burner or wasting fuel. When it's too thin, what I've discovered from this set of tests 
is it doesn't actually hold the heat of the burner. So it got really close to boiling and I expected it to tip over to a rolling boil any second, but it took almost another minute and a half just to go those last 10 degrees. And I think that's because the metal was so thin, it was just bleeding off heat as the stove kind of pumped energy into it from below. So super interesting result that really surprised me. Now, this isn't really a product recommendation video, but it would be, I would feel slightly remiss if I didn't kind of give you some more technical details about these products and then ultimately give you my recommendation for what I'm running this year and why. And as usual, I'm a little bit obsessive about weights. So let's just run through everything here first. So for the pots, the Tokes cup is 1.8 ounces. The Ollie Camp pot is 5.6 ounces. The Snow Peak pot is 4.4 ounces. And the Mini Mo is 7.2 ounces. Now, the Ollie Camp stove only weighs 1.7 ounces. And the Jet Boil stove weighs 4.6 ounces. So the two most efficient setups here, like by a country mile, were the Ollie Camp stove and the Jet Boil Minimo. I also tested it with the uh, Jet Boil burner on the Minimo and got a very similar burn time. It was slightly faster, but the burner is also slightly bigger. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I think that's just because you're applying more fuel. It doesn't, there's not some secret greater efficiency from the Jet Boil. Again, accounting for no wind in my shop. That would be the advantage of the, of the Jet Boil. But let's look at the Jet Boil. 7.2 ounces for the pot plus 4.6 ounces for the stove is 11.8 ounces. Let's just round up to 12 ounces because that's exactly three quarters of a pound. And this has been my ultralight stove that I've carried for probably the last three years. This is the stove, the, the MSR reactor that I use in the winter time, but it doesn't really fall into the ultralight stove category as far as I'm concerned. Now let's go to the Ollie Camp. We have 5.6 ounces for the pot and 1.7 ounces for the stove, giving us a total of 7.3 ounces, less than half a pound. So the Ollie Camp setup is 4.5 ounces or just over a quarter pound lighter than the jet boil setup. The pot is actually significantly bigger as well. So I've been running this Ollie Camp setup um, all last year. So I probably have close to 40 or 50 days in the backcountry with this setup. The other thing is these kind of like name brand prepackaged kits are really expensive. Um, I got to look like, I think it's a couple hundred bucks for this jet boil setup. This Ollie Camp setup on Amazon is like 80 bucks. That is all you need. 7.3 ounces, used it for a year, never had a failure. That's the other thing. So I have owned three jet boil systems. One of them, the igniter went on me. And on the second one, the regulator valve went and it just wouldn't let any fuel through. So I've had two setups die in less than three years. Both of them were just past the one year warranty part and jet boil basically told me to bend over in both situations. They weren't willing to fix it under warranty, even though it was like a matter of a couple months over the one year. And it was clearly manufacturer defect. Like I don't know how I would be responsible for breaking um, a piezo ignition system or the regulator valve, which is inside a closed system. Like it, it's clearly a manufacturer defect. So for that reason, I am done with Jetboil. I will never run Jetboil again. I don't recommend Jetboil. If you want like a closed cell system, I recommend MSR. Um, I've run this reactor for four years now, maybe longer. Never had an issue with it. It's not even really that much heavier. That's the funny thing, but it's a bit of a tank to carry around when you're in the back country. But if you're going like deep winter conditions, you're going to be melting snow all the time or it's super windy, you're in the Alpine, the MSR reactor for me for closed cell systems is probably my strongest recommendation. But if you're like, you know, bivy hunting, sheep hunting, early season, not in the snow, you're looking for the lightest, most versatile setup with the fastest boil times, I go Ollie Camp, XTS, Pot, 
and burner. All right, there you have it. Okay, I hope that was like somewhat enjoyable and somewhat helpful. I think that was a much more pronounced effect than I originally thought it would be. Let me know what other types of like technologies. The next thing I want to figure out a way to do is like get some kind of like water pressure um, testing system at home so I can actually test the underlying fabrics in different types of rain gear because it gets so complicated once you start rain wearing rain gear to kind of figure out which one's actually more waterproof or breathable than the next one. Um, but let me know what other kind of underlying technologies, what other first principles, what other materials do you want me to put head to head that would give you an even deeper understanding to make even more informed, you know, buying decisions moving forward. And as always, any help you could give pumping this up in the algorithm, like, comment, share, subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, thank you for tuning in.